everybody and welcome to We Do Fine Art. This week we are working on a painting for an upcoming group show. This is one of seven paintings that will be in the show. And this is my first show, which is pretty exciting. Okay, so just a short list of the things I'm using, just for those who are interested. Uh, I use it lavender oil. I started using uh, instead of turpentine, because I like it. It's a, a natural... Um, brush cleaner uh, that doesn't poison you so you know that's nice uh, and then refined linseed oil which I use to thin out um, my pigments and ivory black uh, titanium white uh, burnt sienna radiant red which is uh, my favorite pink uh, and then flesh tone which is more of a duller slightly darker version of the radiant red and then Payne's Gray is uh, what I'm going to use for some of the beard and hair uh, areas and into in some of the shadows. I like it because it has this uh, cooler tone to it. Right now you can see I'm starting to actually start to blend some of those transitions together. This area is going to be sort of a five o'clock shadow kind of look so I'm kind of working on the underpainting glow that I want for that. I am by no means a classically trained painter. I am actually a commercial photographer who happens to paint um, on the side and um, it's been it's been a lot of fun learning a new medium and finding just different ways to, you know, go about expressing things I'm interested in. This one is titled I'll Go Animal and is based off of kind of that 1950s greaser guy, but with a little bit of my spin on it. Right now it's not really that well defined, so I'm putting in some titanium white to try to give some separation in that area, but at a kind of low transparency so it's not completely bleeding all the color. So right now I'm sort of working in this kind of silver-haired slash pink um, greaser hair, which I think looks pretty cool. Some of this radiant red, and I'm just trying to just kind of fill in everywhere. I'm not too concerned about defining anything just yet. I'll do that later. So right now I just grabbed a really soft, dry brush and I am just blending the radiant red and gray that I put in there. I like this sort of transition between gray and pink, sort of this old guy who's sort of still cool, or thinks he is. Just kind of playing with this edge, just kind of getting it nice and soft, nothing too defined. You'll see me uh, constantly uh, fiddling with my brushes and with my fingers to sort of modify the brush. I, I don't use a lot of different brushes, but I will definitely use one. I will either flatten it out like a fan or I will twist it into a point. Um, however I need for that stroke, whether it's just a single stroke or not.
So we're going to jump ahead right here. You can see that I've started to define some of the wave of the hair with some titanium white and some of this pink, which is actually titled Radiant Red. I've mixed a little bit of some cadmium red in there to darken that hue. So I just go in stroke by stroke and I just keep defining, just kind of keep seeing what feels right to me. Give a little separation between the hairs. And again, this is not um, how you paint realism by any means. This is, you know, figurative painting. This is just what I think looks cool, not how the human hair necessarily looks. All right, so this is a different day. As you can see, I am wearing different clothes. I promise I will only make that joke once. I am in going in here and I am working with a rigor brush and I am defining more of those darker shadow areas. I prefer to paint on wood panel. I could be sort of aggressive when I'm painting sometimes and I feel like the wood can handle it. I have also managed to ruin many, many of canvases while moving from <laughs> house to house and I don't really want to do that anymore. So yeah, we're going to stick to wood. So to go into more of the show that this is for, it is titled Little Things, and everything has to be under about 12 inches. So I have made a variety of different sizes. This one is only four by four inches, which is quite smaller than I'm normally working on. I've got one that I've been working on for six months that is about six feet by four feet. So uh, switching down to four by four inches is a, a bit of a change for me. Like I said, I have seven paintings in this show. Um, all range from about eight by eight, six by six to four by four. I'm a huge fan of the 1940s, 1950s visual aesthetic. Uh, it's always been sort of a uh, really interesting time period to me uh, visually. Uh, growing up, I would always uh, hang out in my dad's workshop and I would sit on this huge pile of magazines, which, uh, you know, and I'd go through them every once in a while. And, They'd be like old National Geographics and just old magazines from like the 60s and stuff like that. Um, some stuff even dating back to the 50s. And I would go through and I'd see these old advertisements and these old pictures that um, just seemed so foreign to me. You know, it was, it was America, but it just didn't look like, you know, what it looked like in the 1980s when I was growing up. So, I don't know, it just is sort of the aesthetic that sort of stuck with me. Usually I'll work with two brushes, one brush to lay in the color that I want to put in, and the second one, which is sort of a soft dry brush, to follow that up and just soften that pigment that I just added on there, which you'll see me following up with. This is the rigor. This is, this is a brush more normal and ready for um, lines and details and things, but this brush is just absolutely so tiny. I mean, this painting is so tiny that I've had to... <laughs> use brushes I don't normally use for things, but they accomplish what I want, so I don't really care.
I'm just defining some different areas of the skull. Sometimes I over exaggerate it just to kind of make it feel a little more bold. Right now I'm creating that little highlight area up there on the top of the head where you'd see is usually nice and shiny. So I'm just working in some titanium white into the pigments that's already there. Everything is very still very wet, very oily. So I have I really put tiny, tiny amounts of paint on there. And then I just slowly work it in. Defining a little bit of the neckline. Give a little bit of separation here. I've moved to a flat brush. This kind of helps me kind of when I'm working in straight lined kind of areas. Also a really good brush to lay in paint with. All right, now let's get crazy. We are moving into the ivory black and we are defining his collar right now. This is obviously at a faster magnified speed here uh, as I paint incredibly slowly. So it uh, takes a while for me to make my paintings just because of the way that I work in uh, really, really minimal um, layers. I just don't like to add a lot of paint all at once. I like to slowly build it up from there. I mean, it's something that you can always go back and fix for the most part. Again, I love these flat brushes for areas like this where I'm trying to work with the straight line. Sorry for all the turns of the panel, I just cannot seem to keep it straight. I did not prime this panel. Uh, I don't always prime my panels. Normally I will just take it from the box, sand it, make it just nice and buttery smooth, and then paint on it from there. You don't always get the same punch of colors and glow that you get by having a nice white primed panel, but this creamy sort of color that you do have really sort of works nicely with the tones that I like to play with. Putting a little bit of titanium white on top of this, uh, just a little bit of a highlight, doesn't need much. Alright, so I am mixing some raw sienna and titanium white here. And I'm trying to find this, this sort of buttery cream color for the background. This is a color that I'm using in three of the seven paintings. I like to lay this layer of paint nice and thick. I don't really want to do two coats, so I'm going in pretty heavy and not a lot of oil. This flat brush really is nice again, just to clean up some of these straighter kind of curves here, long kind of straight curves to work with. It also, it holds a lot of paint, so I can just, can, I don't have to go back for paint as much. And we're getting towards the end of this, so I'm gonna wrap it up, and I will see you all soon for the reveal. And here we go, here's the finished painting. 
Once again, I am really happy that you are here. Uh, thank you so much for watching to the end. And if you are able to come to the show uh, on November 9th uh, for the opening reception, I would love to see you there. Thank you so much for watching, and please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you on the next one.